Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Ram. Today, you join me in the middle of a lot of explosions. And you might be wondering why everything is exploding right now. And that would be because I'm testing a new vehicle that is supposed to survive heavy damage uh, due to BD armory weapons attacking it. And while it doesn't fulfill its goal in, able to, in being able to survive and continue to be useful, it seems to be fulfilling its goal in terms of it has survived about, I don't know, 100 explosions maybe from direct hits from anti-air gunfire and we're still flying. I mean, we're not anymore. No, I'm, actually no, we're still, I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell with all the explosions and, you know, massive lag, but uh, this, this is a plane, or at least it was a plane. It's, uh, it's blowing up quite a lot right now. Uh, it doesn't have the BD Armory Weapon Manager anymore. That's how much it's blown up. I think this might actually just be a KSP bug where it's decided to keep exploding for some reason and never stop. I, I really can't tell anymore because it's just... The thing is, though, we're flying surprisingly well. It looks like... I can't quite tell. I, actually, I think we're not being shot at anymore. Yeah, this is just a glitch where we're just still exploding even though we've already exploded. I don't know which part is repeatedly exploding. Let's see. Uh, pack intercepts uh, overheated a whole bunch. Now it looks like the airstream... The airstream protective shell is uh, exploding repeatedly. Now it's supposed to explode and prevent us from dying from the overheat. Oh, and I've just managed to fire the gun a bit. Well, the one gun that's left. The other one got blown off with our uh, other wing. But it seems like uh, something has happened where the protective shell is not quite working the way it's supposed to. The front of this actually has two protective shells. Looks like both of them have become dislodged. And uh, I think that's just like repeatedly exploding and it's making the game not be able to cope with itself anymore. So I'm going to have to re abort this test. And um, I think I'm going to remove those because I think uh, that's that's a problem. Yeah. Um, oh, did we crash? No, we're still high up in the air. It's really hard to tell what's going on right now. Those are some bright explosions, though. I can say that much. Let's shoot. There we go. We have one gun still firing. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this catastrophe. All right, and here's the uh, plane design, the ugly-ass thing that it is, in the VAB, or rather the SPH, actually. As you can see, it has heat shields and radiators all over it, and those are basically armor, because the way BD Armory works is every time you're hit by a missile, or excuse me, hit by a missile or a gun, uh, it causes overheat, and that's how it kills you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to replace this with just kind of a standard... Where is it? We're gonna replace it with this NTS adapter, and we're also going to put on an avionics hub. And we're gonna just, you know, we had a nose that was made of two, two aero shells and a heat shield, because those can take more damage before being destroyed, or rather, take more heat before being destroyed. This is what we'll go with this time around. Yeah, I know it's kind of not realistic in that our uh, intakes for air are completely covered up by heat shields. In fact, let's go ahead and just take those off so it's a bit, it's a slightly more realistic kind of thing. But yeah, just pretend all these things are heavy armor and uh, this is an armored plane and we'll call this the X2B experimental AGA. The X2 anti-ground attacker uses heat dissipating technologies in an effort to survive direct hits from ground attack. The X2 is designed to fly low and fast, spraying targets with heavy cannon fire. I suppose I should change that to say Gatling fire because it's, it's, it's a Gatling gun. But Gatling doesn't sound as nice as, as cannon fire, so actually I'm gonna change that back. One important thing I forgot to change before relaunching it, you'll notice that the rear landing gear are higher than the front landing gear, and uh, or rather the other way around, the rear landing gear are lower than the front, and that makes it so that this thing can't take off from the runway without getting to the end of the runway. Let's go ahead and get blown up. We should get blown up by an explosive shell in three, two, one. Oh. Oh, there we go. Yep. Alright, and a direct hit from that explosion destroyed one of our radiator panels and partially overheated some of our systems, but otherwise the plane is perfectly fine. See, that's what this thing is designed to do during combat. 
survive hits like that. Let's go ahead and look at F3. A small radiator panel exploded due to overheating. Everything else, perfectly fine. In fact, let's see how many more hits we can take direct like that without dying. Come on, Millennium Cannon. You can do it. And... Wait for it. You can fire now. Go ahead. There we go. Okay, and that was a second direct hit, second explosion. Something is definitely broken off there and we're on fire. Let's see what that was. It was our Gatling Cannon. And as you can see, we have other things of warning about overheats. But overall, the plane is still in fairly good condition. Let's go ahead and convince the Millennium Cannon to take another shot at us. And wait for it. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Seriously, just shoot the damn plane already. No? Is it? Oh, there we go. Okay, now that time, that was a serious failure, unfortunately. Looks like it took out the, uh, looks like it managed to actually take out uh, the central piece of the plane, one of the fuel tanks, and that of course caused everything else to literally fall apart as it was no longer attached to anything. And as you can see here, yes, liquid fuel fuselage exploded due to overheating, also to radiator panels and an NCS adapter. So yeah, this thing can survive a couple direct hits at close range from the Millennium Cannon. So that tells you it's doing something right. Let's see, looks like they're pretty close to even now. I've rearranged the landing gear slightly. Let's go ahead and save this and give it a try. Looks like, yes, it dips down ever so slightly, but not as much as the previous version. So, a couple things to note real fast, we do not have any yaw control. We do have pitch control just with these, and roll control with these, and the engines of course have their, uh, what do you call it, gimbling. So we actually do have some yaw control in the gimbal. Of course there's also the reaction wheel in the cockpit which isn't disabled. So technically, that is also giving us some, whoa, some yaw. Okay, and good, we can actually take off from the runway at some speed. Let's go ahead and switch to team B. And let's go ahead and start pulling up because we're going to be shot at already. Yep, there we go. Ooh, fuck, we lost an engine. Okay, okay, okay. Now let's see how well this thing survives losing an engine. I've turned down the uh, throttle on our remaining engine to keep us hopefully from completely losing control. Unfortunately, as a side effect that we are now falling and now we've lost a wing and direct hit from a missile. We've lost the other wing. We still have engine power. <laughs> we still have engine power. It can't. They can't take that from us. But uh, that's just going to spin us out, which obviously is the last thing we need right now. And we're going to just go crashing into the ground. The pilot did survive, however. So I'd say that is an improvement. Uh, yes, because it can take off on its own, and the pilot did survive that, which is amazing. That was amazing. Let's do that again. All right, the difference this time is that we will not be attacking, we will not be switching teams immediately and then getting owned. We will be getting in the air and um, actually no, no, I'm going to switch teams immediately again because it's just fun to do that. Uh, this time my plan is not to try and turn around and to, and to attack back at this base. My plan is to get into the air and escape this base and then move on to the island base over there and attack everything over there. Now this time what I'm going to do is before I switch teams I'm going to wait till I'm one kilometer, there we go, one kilometer away from the goalkeeper CIWS and now I'm going to start trying to maneuver out of those bullets and I'm just kind of making small movements oh, and trying to avoid that kind of thing. Really I shouldn't have kept myself so parallel to the gunfire we're having a slightly uncontrolled spin. Uh, I'm trying to control that now. That is unfortunately taking up a lot of my ability to maneuver, just combating that spin. And unfortunately, I believe we're going to be hit by this missile. If we aren't hit by it by some miracle... Nah, we were hit by it. I was gonna say, if we weren't hit by it by some miracle, then my next order of business... Oh, we lost the panel. Was that the primary buffer panel? God damn it! <laughs> oh, what does it switch me to? One of the SAMs. Alright, so the biggest problem with this vessel is that it needs more control authority. So, taking a look at it now, and I'm thinking about how I would go about adding more control authority. Now, the simplest and easy way is more control surfaces! And so I think I'm gonna do that, because, you know, 
Let's see, I'm, I'm slightly going for the A10 look, uh, slightly, only slightly in that it has kind of a, uh, what do you call this? Well, it's, it's like a U kind of tail plane and has the uh, flat wide wings and double engines across the fuselage. Uh, let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put two of these like this. I believe that's a, uh, oh, you know what? That's clipping slightly. See, as I've said before, I don't like when things clip. And overall, I, I... I'm having fun with this design, but overall I don't think it's really going to be that good a design. It's just, it's got too many flaws, you know? Alright, this these will be used for both pitch and roll. And I'm actually going to go ahead and change these to be authorized for pitch and roll. And these are going to be for pitch and roll. And I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call this the B Active. Because <laughs> it's, um... Whatchamacallit, uh, have you ever heard of the F-15 Active, which was an experimental platform adding, uh, what was it, it was canards, and I, I forget if they added thrust vectoring to that as well, or if it was just adding canards to it, but they added canards to a, what's the term, F-15, yes, F-15, they added canards to it so that it had more control authority, and uh, it was, you know, more maneuverable, those are way too big. Let's just go with some of these on the wings, uh, whoops, wrong button. All right, and that one, nope, that one, and nope, nope, and there we go. All right, and we're just gonna put those about there. There looks good, and these are not gonna be for yaw. Now we do, I'm thinking now that not having yaw control is a bit of a mistake, um, that possibly could have helped us, so let's put a giant ass, <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, let's put a giant ass fin on the back there. No, uh, where is, the let's uh, standard canard uh, no i'm not feeling no yeah standard canard because else i'd be putting a gonna call it let's just put it okay there yes there we go and then we'll offset it to go further back and right about there and we'll raise it up slightly and there we go we have a canard and of course we're going to set that to just yaw control and hopefully this will have a better survival rate if uh, if we lose the tip of the wing, because losing the tip of the wing and then losing the whole plane just because we lost the tip of the wing, ki wing? wing kind of sucked. And uh, so I'd like to avoid that happening in the future. Another thing I'm thinking about doing is, see, we have one radiator panel here. What we really need are like a ton of them, actually. We, we need a lot of them. And so I'm thinking about just setting up a set here and then another set next to that, and then going to the underside of it and doing the same thing, even though it means a lot more parts, which is not a very good thing, and I try to avoid that. But this thing is designed to be armored, and so we need the armor. All right, now we just gotta move those into place. All right, and there we have it, the X2 be active. X2 be active. We should just call it the reactive at this point. Nah. And the X2 B active has 64 parts, so it's actually still less parts than my previous design. Actually, no, I was wrong. My uh, previous design planes is uh, 63 parts with the one that has the most parts. So actually, starting to get a little bit heavier, but actually not much, so that's nice. I actually forgot to look at how the art, the, uh, yeah, the, uh, weapon manager clips in there. So I'm gonna have to change the placement of it. I think I'll put it up here on top of this bit. But, uh, otherwise, for now, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, take off with this plane. Arm the trigger. Let's get our radar warning on. And, whoa. Yes, it pulls up off the runway much nicer now. Let's go ahead and switch teams. Immediately regret it and switch back. We possibly got shot at, but probably didn't. All right. This thing uh, seems to be a little slower to get up to speed. All right, activating team B. Oh shit, oh shit, I just stalled us out. That's gonna be difficult to recover from because we're gonna stop stationary. We're probably gonna take some hits right now. Yep, there's a hit. Um, That was the nose. Whoa. Yeah, okay, this thing does not fly as well. Oh shit, yeah, we're, we're, we're out of, um, yeah, let's just see if we can survive it at this point. Of course, we have a missile locked on us, so, um, that missile will stay locked on us, unfortunately. 
And let's, come on, pull it sideways. Oh, crap. <laughs> the missile hit right as we hit the freaking ground. That's great. All right, so the B active is actually too active. We need to uh, reduce how much activity it has. No, uh, we need to... I'm thinking the simplest fix for this is just to move the wings back, actually. So I'm going to try that first. Let's go ahead and get into offset. And see, a lot of this stuff is based right on the wings. So we can actually just move it back, just all of it, very easily, which is which is nice. You know, when you fuck up like this, it's nice to be able to just move everything back a bit to try and uh, deal with your fucking up. All right, let's go ahead and move these forward onto the wing a bit more. And uh, we'll move these actually no back onto the wing more there we go it's kind of a tighter arrangement of things let's turn those off ah uh, yeah see these are clipped into those slightly which i don't like i think that's a good uh, arrangement there except we're gonna put those lower down there we go i think that's better overall now of course the guns they need to clear the canards at the front there and they're actually pretty close to not clearing them so i'm actually going to move these up a bit i'm also going to see if there's room to move them back at all I don't think there really is. Yeah, there's not... There's a tiny, tiny bit of room, but not much. But uh, that should be clearing it better now. Not that we had too much of an issue with that before. I'm actually going to move... That's the whole wing. No. I want to move this down just to... Never mind. I can't really without uh, making it not look the way I want it to look. Now, unfortunately, this radiator is now clipping into the engine, which I don't like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over. There we go. And, of course, you can't move over one thing on the bottom without moving over both. There we go. Looks a little bit different now. Oh, that also cleared up the fact that the uh, armory, uh, uh, BD armory weapon manager, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Weapon manager was uh, over... Damn it. I tried to hit 2 and instead hit W. Yeah, there we go. I think that's a good place for it. Alright, it's still just on one thing. That's good. Yeah, this plane does not look good. I I won't be releasing this just because it doesn't look good, yet alone the functionality. Like, if this, this is a piece of garbage. But it's a fun piece of garbage to make. Okay, fine, I'll release it anyhow, because I know someone will be like, Ah, you should! I want it! Alright, here we are on the runway for the last and final time. For the last? Again, and for the last time. Yeah, that's sure, that's... My brains doesn't know what they's doings. Yes, this should be the last time that I take off with this plane today in this video. This is the last part. I'm just gonna give it one more shot. Alright. Hopefully I don't screw things up by pulling up too hard. But we're gonna go ahead and this time properly get one kilometer away from the CIWS. As you can see, it takes off much quicker now that we have more control authority. Like I said, we're going to wait till we're one kilometer away from the CIWS. I was about to say click, and that actually would have made the same amount of sense, actually, to say click instead of kilometer. Okay, and... Alright. Whoa. Yeah, I'm trying not to uh, pull up too hard because this thing has already shown a penchant to pull up too hard. Now, unfortunately, I'm not having a very good job seeing how close that missile is. That one's pretty close. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pull up pretty hard now. And we're going to have that missile miss. Now, unfortunately, we are now heading back towards the target. But it'll be okay because, see, I'm watching the missiles. We're out of range of the guns. And as soon as the missile enters one kilometer, we're going to pull up hard, as I'm already doing. And as you can see, that missile is now going to miss. Unfortunately, the next one is already really close! Holy shit. Luckily, we somehow avoided that. Alright, and we've got more missiles incoming. I'm gonna wait again. I'm gonna wait till they get close, and then I'm gonna pull up really hard to dodge them. Alright, that's pretty close. Now, unfortunately, the next one is... I should not be turning away from it so much as just pulling up sideways. Okay, this is gonna get close. Woo! Somehow, somehow we didn't get hit by that. But as you can see, we're uh, we're doing alright. Despite their best efforts. Alright, let's try and 
head out this way a bit more. And this doesn't even have countermeasures, mind you. Oh, those two were pretty close. In fact, one was so close that we're now in pieces. Okay, that's a problem. Let's go ahead and turn off the uh, fact that we're on that side. Yeah, that, um, unfortunately, that did not go very well when it hit us. So this was designed, at least the idea, was that this was designed to survive missile impacts, but really it can only survive gun. Wow, I thought I was dead there. I'm dead here. Knew it. Um, yeah, it can survive gun attacks. It cannot, however, survive missile attacks. So, there we go. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in space.